The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in Him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, so that everyone who believes in Him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through Him. Those who believe in Him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world. And people love darkness <clears throat> rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. speaks of God as lover, beloved, and love. 
When God created the land and the trees and the plants and the water and the animals and the day and the night, he called them good. Or to use another word, perfect. But that was not so after he created man. He did not refer to good again until several verses later when he viewed creation as a whole, a a part of which man was. And then he said that it was very good. But that was not so after he created man. He did say, though, that God was created in his image. So why wouldn't that make man good or perfect? In her book, The Dream of God, Verna Dozier says that to be created in God's image doesn't mean that we look like God, but rather that we were created free. In all of creation, she explains, the only beings who are not programmed and who are given a choice to be something other than how God imagined them and created them to be are humans. God wanted to love and to be loved, and love is risky. Or maybe a better word is vulnerable. Does it make you uncomfortable to think of God as being vulnerable? I mean, vulnerability is such a human condition, right? But in order for the lover to receive love, the beloved must be free to choose whether he or she will accept or reject that love. And therefore, God, as the one seeking to love and be loved, accepted the fact that man, because he was free, would be just as likely to reject his love as he would be to accept it. And God was up to that challenge. Think about how it feels when someone chooses to love you. Doesn't it make you feel accepted and valued, chosen, seen? But if you were forcing that person to love you or that person was somehow forced to love you, instead of choosing it, it wouldn't feel the same, would it? You see, God could have created man and programmed us humans just like the rest of creation. A tree can only live exactly how God created it, the way that God wanted it to be. That tree is perfect and pleasing to God, but it does not love God in the way that he sought to be loved. And this is where man enters the love story. God has devoted every moment of every single day since he formed Adam from the dust of the earth to courting humans, to wooing us, to charming us. It's all right there in the Bible. From the fairy tale love story that went awry of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden and throughout the Old Testament, God's signs of love to man are documented. There were sometimes consequences for turning away from God and not fully trusting Him. God showed, but I can see love in these consequences as well. God showed Adam and Eve a new way forward if they would simply return to Him and trust Him. And God even fulfilled his promises to those whiny, complaining Israelites wandering in the wilderness, even though he sometimes had to implement some tough love strategies like sending venomous serpents to bite the people and get their attention. But it worked. That tough love reminded the Israelites and the people of God that God was with them and would ultimately heal them. And then we hear in the gospel today um, an echoing of the story from the Old Testament. We see God's ultimate sign of love and his true plan for creation as revealed in Jesus. In these verses, Jesus is talking to Nicodemus and telling him that he has been sent as a new sign, that he has come to show the people a new way forward a way for them to live into a faith commitment that is a true faith commitment to one God and not a faith 
built solely on strict adherence to the law. Nicodemus himself was a high priest and a teacher of the law, and so he was very familiar with the Hebrew law and strict about keeping what the law said. So Nicodemus was shocked to hear what Jesus said. But Jesus reassures him that he has been sent not to condemn the world, but to save it. Jesus then set about a way of living that would show that the only right relationship between God and God's people is gratitude for what God has done and faith in what God will do. That faith in what God will do requires us to assume some risk, some risk for the unknown. It's getting uncomfortable. It's getting comfortable with the sometimes very uncomfortable feeling of not having all the answers or knowing exactly how it's all going to play out, but choosing to trust God to fulfill his promises. And friends, that is the gospel. Right there in the most well-known Bible verse, the most memorized Bible verse, John 3:16. We see that God loved the world so deeply and so desperately that he opened up his hands and in his benevolence sent himself embodied in Jesus to live amongst the world and show the world how it's really supposed to be done in his kingdom and to make that kingdom of God a little more visible to us humans who have limited spiritual sight. Jesus himself was the new sign that God was sending to the people. When he compares himself to the poisonous serpent raised on a pole, we can see that Jesus is calling us to look to him both when he is raised on the cross and when he rises into heaven at his resurrection. He is the sign for the people to return their trust to God and to look to God. And guess what? There's more good news. God's story didn't start or stop when our scriptures were canonized. Even today, God is still reaching out his benevolent hand to court us, his beloveds. As we move through the rest of this season of Lent and look forward to the celebration of Easter, what signs are God showing you that you need to return to him. Signs that he is still reaching out his hand to show you that he loves you and he's still here with us. Signs maybe that would even show you a new way forward. For indeed, God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Thanks be to God. Amen.